how great it would be to convert your boring Google spreadsheet task tracker from something like this to an interactive graphical dashboard, something like this. Let's sort of build this dashboard from scratch and learn how to work on it. Here in this example, I've taken the task tracker for a software company help desk. Now, as you can see in this particular task tracker, there is call ID, which is like the emails that you receive. They're sequentially put into this particular sheet. It's being put by various agents, which are defined by the agent IDs. In this example, there are five cities, which you can see here, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New York City, and Phoenix. And then the date on which the call came, agent ID, receipt time and resolve time, and then the handling time, which is the difference between the receipt time and the resolve time. And then there's the type of call. There could be various types of calls. As we can see here, it could be an installation, service center inquiry, software update, troubleshooting, or usability feedback. Now, this is the kind of data that you might be maintaining, and we just want to create dashboards out of these. Before creating the dashboards, let's just modify our sheets a bit so that our data entry and data extraction can become a bit more easier. Now, the first thing that I'll do is that this particular call ID that is being manually entered, I'll try to automate it. In order to do so, what I'll do is that I'll add another column over here. I know that this is a sequential number, so I'll add the numbers over here in sequence. Now that I know that I cannot do anything to the data that has already been added, so I'll just leave it as is. But here in call ID, I'll put down a function equal to in quotes ABC hyphen ampersand and then the number itself like this something like this now you would also want that if the data is not added over here then your call ID should not show up so what you can simply do is that you put a function of len saying that if the len of this particular cell is zero then in that case this would be black so the function would be equal to if len of the next cell which is C1001 is equal to zero then the answer should be a uh, double quotes else it should be this particular number something like this yeah let's just check it here you have the number now what you can also do is that you can protect this particular column so that nobody accidentally puts in any data in this particular column I'll just hide this particular column for now and then we are ready with a call ID coming automatically into the cell I also know that I have got five cities, I got five agents and I got four or five different types of calls. So what I can do is that instead of people manually adding it over here, I add a data validation. So what I've done is that in a separate sheet, I have called out the different types of data validations that are needed. Like type of call, I have five different types of calls. There are five cities and then agent IDs. There are right now five agents. So what I can do is I'll go over here, go to the city, data, data validation, list from a range. And in this particular range in the city, I will select these five cities and press OK and save. So when I go over here, I can see that I get these five cities in my drop down. Similarly, I'll do the data validation for agent ID as well as for the type of call. Once I've done the data validation for different cells in a row, I'll copy the row and paste it in the entire tracker. If you have a look at the dashboards, you can see that I have a monthly view as well. So what I need is that I need to extract the month from each date as well so that I can collate them together in the dashboard. I will therefore add a column over here which is the month. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the month number as equal to month hyphen ampersand and then text of the date comma m which is the month. So I get month one over here. I'll copy this particular function and paste it in the entire column. This is how I'll get the month number. Once you've done the entry for the month, you will format the entire task tracker and it will look something like this. Now next is the creation of the dashboards. Let's now quickly start creating the dashboards. If you look at the dashboard, you can see that I got graphs by month, by city and then by agent. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to prepare all those graphs by these categories only. First, we'll prepare the monthly graphs, then the city graphs, and then the agent graphs. So let's just open up a new tab, and let's say we call it monthly graphs. Let's see what I've created in my graph. I have got month-wise, city-wise, number of calls. 
So what I can do is that in this new sheet that I created for month, I'll first of all create a pivot table. In order to get a pivot table, I'll go to data, pivot table, and then here in the data range, I will select tracking sheet. In the tracking sheet, I'll select these columns, B to J, press OK, and then it'll ask me where I want to insert it. I want to insert it in an existing sheet. I'll click on that existing sheet and whichever cell I want to put the pivot table in, I'll just click it once and then press OK. You can check these details and once you're satisfied, just click Create. Now in this particular pivot table, in the rows, I'm going to put down the city. I do not need the total, so I'll just remove it. In the columns, I'm going to put down the month, something like this. And then when I go to values, I can just add the call ID. Now I don't want the blank cells to be counted. So I'll go to filters and add a filter for let's say month. And in months I'll go over here and just remove the blanks from here and press OK. So this is how my pivot table will look like. I'll just remove the totals from here so that I just have the monthly information without the totals. Now the easiest way to insert a graph is to just select your data like this and then go to the top menu, press insert and then chart. From here you can select the chart type which is a column chart and that is how my chart looks like. I can further modify this chart by just having the title change over here like I'll put on something like city voice calls and then your legend you can position it at the bottom of your graph. So once your graph is ready you can just keep it aside. Now if I go back to the final dashboard the next one is that I need the month wise call types. So what I can do is that I can just copy this particular pivot and make copy of it here. Now I'll make some changes in this particular pivot and here instead of month, I'll just remove the month from the columns and in the columns I'll add type of call. Again I don't need the total so I'll just remove the totals. Now I'll select this data again, insert, chart and here I can use a different chart type let's say I want a bar chart like this then what I can do is that I can just change the title of the chart to month wise call types I'll select the legend and position it at the bottom you can also change the bar chart to a stacked bar chart so that it becomes more visible something like this see this representation is much better than the bar chart and again I'll put the legend at the bottom and call it month wise call types and then once I'm done with this particular chart, I'll keep it on a side as well. And then the third one is turnaround time. So for turnaround time, what I'll do is that again, I'll just copy this particular pivot table and make a different copy of it. And here I'm going to change everything. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove the current rows, columns and values. And then in rows, I'm going to insert the month in columns. I don't put anything in the columns. And in values, I put down the handling time, the average handling time. And instead of sum, I put over here an average. So this is how my table will look like. Now I want to create a gate chart, something like this. The problem with a gate chart is that in its data, it takes only numbers. So what I need to do is that I need to convert all of this data into numbers. What I can simply do is that I'll just take month one, month two, and month three like this. And here I can do a text function equal to text, select this one, comma, and then do minutes mm dot seconds, SS. Instead of colon, I'll use a dot. So it's 16.22, 15.40, and 15.00. Now this becomes my new data that I'm going to use for my gauge charts. Now in the dashboard, you can see that my gauge has got a green, orange, and a red area, which defines the criticality of the handling time. So we need to define those for our data as well. What we can do is that we can define like 10 to 14 is yellow, 14 to 16 is green and 16 to let's say 22 is red. And of course we don't expect anything to be above it. After adding the headers, I will select this particular data, go to insert charts. And from here, I'll select the gate chart like this. 
Now you would have seen that no data is appearing over here. The reason being that when we converted the data from the pivot table into text, it only took it as a text. We actually need the value of this particular text. So we'll need to put this entire function inside a value function. Something like this, enter. So now you can see that all the three gauges are appearing, but those three zones are not appearing and you can see that by default it takes the speedometer from 0 to 100. Now let's double click on it and modify it. Now I'll add the gauge range which ranges from 10 to 22. So it goes from 10 up to 22 and then I'll add the different color ranges. So the maximum is 22, so it goes from 16 to 22. The orange range is going to be 14 to 16 and the green range is going to be 10 to 40. Once you put all of those ranges, you can see how your charts look like and you'll also get an idea of how exactly these needles are showing up. Now that you have made the three charts for your monthly view, what you can do is that you can open up a new tab and start arranging your final dashboard. In order to do that, what I'll do is that I'll copy all the three graphs one by one. I'll go to these three dots, copy chart, go to the new chart and paste it over here. And I'll go back over here, collect the other chart, copy it, paste it over here. And then the third chart, which I'll copy from here and paste it over here. And then the third chart, which I'll copy from here and paste it over here. Now what I can do is that I can just try to arrange my dashboard a bit. You might also want to remove the grid lines. So your month view is ready. You can look at this graph to show you the monthly comparison of average handling times, call types, and how many calls per city have you received. Once the month view is done, we want to look at the city view. In order to do that, let's assign another tab to the city view. And let's start making different pivots for the city. Instead of making the pivots from scratch, what I can do is that I can go to the one where I had the monthly graphs. I can just copy one of the pivot, paste it in a sheet over here, and then I can start making the pivot for the city. Now let's say for each city, I want for the entire quarters, the various types of calls that I have received. So in that case, I'll just modify the pivot a bit. From this particular pivot, I'll remove the month and in columns, I'll add type of call. Remove the totals from here. And this is how my pivot looks like. I'll just select this entire pivot, insert, chart, and this is how my chart looks like. Now I can just put a title to this particular chart. Let's say call it Q1 city-wise types of calls. And then I can just take this ledger at the bottom of the graph. Now I would also want that in quarter one, what is the share of each and every city in terms of number of calls? So I'll just select this entire pivot, put it over here again, and then remove the columns. And instead of columns over here, I just have the count of call IDs. And then I can select this entire data and do insert chart. And here what I can do is that I can just select a pie chart, something like this. And the third one is city wise monthly calls. So I'm going to just copy this pivot table. Let's say I paste it here and then in the columns, I'm going to add month. I remove the totals and this is how my pivot table looks like. Now I'm going to select this entire data, insert chart, and I'm going to change this type of chart to stacked bar chart, something like this. And this is how my chart looks like. I can change the title. So this is how my third chart looks like. Now once I've got these charts for the city view as well, I'll go ahead and paste them in my city view one by one. I'll first take this chart, copy it, paste it over here. The second chart, copy it from here, paste it over here, and then the third one. So once I'm done with the copying, I'll just try to adjust it within the area given. So this is how your two sections of the dashboard will look like. Now comes the agent view. Now I have assigned another tab to agents and the first pivot table I would want is the number of calls handled per agent month on month. So first of all, I'll just copy an existing pivot and paste it in the tab that I've assigned for agent. Now I'll remove data from here. Of course, I want to retain the filters because I don't want the blanks to appear. Then in rows, I'll add the agent ID, remove the totals. And in columns, I'm going to add the month and values, call ID is already there, so I will leave it as is. 
So this will give me a table of agent ID versus the month and how many calls they have taken per month. I can remove the totals from here as well. And now I'll select this entire data, insert chart. I'll do a stacked one so that it becomes easier for me to visualize it. From here, I'll select a stacked chart, something like this. And this should give me the month on month calls that are taken by those agents. So this is how it looks like. Now, I would also want to know what are the different types of call that every agent has taken and what are the numbers of such calls. So I'll copy this entire pivot, paste it over here and then make some changes. What I'm going to do the changes is in the columns. I'll remove month and instead of months, I'll put type of call and this is how it looks like. Remove the totals and then select the entire data, insert chart. So this is how the chart looks like. I've got my second chart ready as well. So what I'm going to do is that now I'll paste both of these charts in my dashboard. Copy the chart, go to the dashboard that I prepared and here I'll paste the agent field. Go to the other chart, copy it, go back to the dashboard and just paste this graph. And I can kind of adjust it. So this is how your dashboard looks like. Now, if you see the dashboard that I showed you earlier, it also has the agent wise average handling time. This is also pretty simple to enter. Let's go agent by agent. I'll directly go in the dashboard and add over here, agent wise average handling time. Now here, if you see, I just put down the agent code. You can also put down the full name of the agent. Let's say you want to put the photograph of the agent over here. You can uh, do an insert image, image or cells. And then you can select whether you want to upload it, you want to put it from your camera or you have some photographs saved on the Google Drive. I right now, just for the sake of example, I used, uh, I used a simple Google search to add those images. These are just representative, so you can just kind of use these particular images like this and then you put down the data let's say i want calls handled month one month two and let's say we need calls handled by agent 0001 equal to count if s criteria one is this one which is the month comma and the criteria is going to be this one which is the month one comma second criteria is going to be the agent id i go back to the tracking sheet and select the column which has the agent id comma back to the dashboard and here i select this particular cell and enter so this is how you'll get how many calls have been handled by this particular agent now let's say you also want the maximum minimum and the average handling time of this particular person for the three months how you can do it is that you can put month hyphen one month hyphen two month hyphen three in the row and here i'm going to put down max minimum and average something like this in order to find the maximum time taken by agent one in month one i'll use a function equal to max if s now here first of all i'll have to select the range from where i have to select the maximum time taken so i'll go back to the tracking sheet and select the handling time entire column comma your first criteria range is your month comma and what is your criteria it is the month one which is here in h57 comma now you need to filter it for agent one so you'll go back to the tracking sheet select the range for agent id comma go back to the sheet where you are adding this function which is the dashboard select agent 001 and then press enter so this should give you the maximum amount of time agent one has spent on any particular call of course this result is coming as a number you would want to change the format to time or duration so you go to format number and from number you select duration similarly you can fill it for month two and month three as well and of course, the way we put in max FS function, we also have a minimum FS, which is MINFS and average FS. This should give you the maximum, minimum and average across the three months. Let's just put down the functions over here. So now you can see that we have filled in this table for maximum, minimum and the average time taken across the three months. 
Now let's say for each agent, you also want the dials to be shown for average handling time across the three months. What I would recommend is that you just make a replica of this particular table over here and then put down the average times over here and as a value so that it comes up as a number equal to text of this one comma in quotes minutes dot seconds and this entire thing gets inside a value function something like this once you're done this just select the entire data insert chart and then this chart you can change it to a gate chart and this is how your gate chart looks like now, as we discussed earlier, you can assign the green, orange or yellow and the red zone so that you can make these three dials showing the average handling time in month one, month two and month three. So once you are done with the data for agent one, you can just replicate the data and make the data available for agent two, three, four and five as well. Now, once you are done with arranging these charts, you can add some finer details to your charts like color of the background. You just click anywhere on the chart and then go to customize chart styles. And let's say background color, you would want a light color over here, something like this. Then another one. Similarly, you can add it to all the different charts. You would also want to add data labels to your charts. For that, you can go to customize and then in series, you add data labels something like this you can see over here you can customize the font size you can make it bold so that they are visible and you can even change the colors of your fonts once you're done with everything this is how your final dashboard is going to look like and yes one very important and interesting thing you can publish this particular dashboard as a web page yes that's right you can publish it as a web page for that what you need to do is that you go to file publish to the web and then just select the particular tab that you want to publish let's say you want to publish the entire document the entire spreadsheet would be published but if you let's say want to just publish the final dashboard from here you select final dashboard and a link will be generated copy that particular link and look how this dashboard looks like you have all the data available over here now another good thing about dashboards of Google Sheets is that all of these dashboards charts are interactive. If you just hover over these charts, you can see that the data becomes visible. Let's say I want to go to installation over here. You can see that you get a pop up which shows month one. So it's, it's quite interesting because all of this data is available over here. It's not some dumb data that you sometimes get in Excel charts, but it's actually live data. And of course, this data gets updated every five minutes. As you see over here, as and when your sheet is filled, the data is updated here as well. So friends, you've seen that how easy it is to create these interactive dashboards from some dumb task trackers like these and have an overall view of what's happening in the project or in the tasks. I will leave a link for you in the description to download this particular tracker, but this is just for reference and you can make any particular changes or create a new one on your own and still if you have any queries please do not hesitate to write down those in the comment section below and yes if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time a new video is uploaded